on the current Arkansas law, you cited where some have made threats in such as uh, whether they had the firearms to do anything or not. But some talk about uh, they're legal until you holler fire in a crowded theater. What is the current Arkansas law when somebody says, I'm going, to, I've got a plan to kill people? What is the current law? When they want to uh, talk to the prosecutor, said, and one of them is sitting right behind you. But I think the, the issue here is kind of a, a general threat to do harm, not particularly like not me saying, I'm going to come to your house and kill you. I think that's terroristic threatening right now under Arkansas law. Uh, there's lots of different things that, that can create problems for you, but the generalized threat to say a school or maybe a diary or problems with your mental health generally or your family seeing problems with you is the point that this bill is supposed to address. Also under the current uh, criminal code, and, and like I said, some of those are more experienced with criminal law than one way in, there's not a mechanism to short circuit necessarily your access to weapons. So if in this, that, that is what this bill would do. It would address the issues that somebody is threatening to kill themselves or someone else, and it would give law enforcement the ability to determine whether that was a legitimate threat and to uh, go before a judge and ask that judge to give them the ability to have this uh, extreme risk protection order put in place. So it's a little different. They do relate, and I don't want to say that, and others may want to weigh in specifically. Just because you're, you know, you're, uh, well, that's. But do we have anything that goes beyond the 72 hour law? If somebody makes a specific threat at this time? You mean on like civil commitment? So, you can seek a civil commitment of someone and they have to meet a certain standard, which usually involves, my understanding, back when I used to do a little bit of this, it's been a few years. That usually involves a determination of, uh, of mental capacity, not necessarily criminal intent. And so it's two different things. And that's why we believe this piece of legislation is different and needed as opposed to the civil commitment statute or just your normal criminal code. I, I read through the, the bill and, and look, tried to look at some of the what people will see as uh, safeguards but talking about who defines red flag, would you agree that we've got some judges who are biased and some who tend to be activists? Either one of you. I would hope that in a situation like this where there are potentially lives at stake, that a judge is looking past whatever bias he or she might have um, an issue that doesn't have quite the urgency or, or the, the stakes that a situation like this would present. Well, and I'll say this, I always joke about it, I say uh, a lot of people like an activist judge when they're active in their favor. Yeah. And so I think they're judges of all different ilks across the state, depending on where you live. These people are elected. They're the mechanism that determines, you know, warrants and, and decide criminal cases across the state every day. And they're just the folks our judiciary is set up to make these types of decisions. Uh, you have rights to appeal, those types of things. So really, it's the only, uh, the best mechanism to make this type of determination. And those people are elected uh, just like we are. And I'll finish up.